Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to go through transcriptional factors. If you are new here then just click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the videos. So first of all this falls under topic 8 for AQA looking at how you can control protein synthesis specifically transcription. And in eukaryotic cells, transcription of target genes can be stimulated or it can be inhibited when there are certain molecules, which we call transcriptional factors, which move from the cytoplasm into the nucleus and they can either initiate or inhibit transcription. And we often call this turning on or turning off genes because these transcriptional factors will bind to particular sequences of DNA or genes, and therefore they control whether that gene can go through protein synthesis to make a particular protein. And it's in this way that cells become specialised, because certain genes are switched on and off to create the proteins required to make a specialised cell. So what we're going to go through is um, transcriptional control in this video, which is the control of DNA to mRNA, so to controlling whether transcription occurs or not. Translational control will be coming up in a later video. So what are transcriptional factors first of all? So we've already said that they can bind to DNA. When they are activated, they move from the cytoplasm of a cell into the nucleus and then they bind to that DNA to initiate transcription. Now they are proteins, so these are molecules which are proteins, so you can get questions linked to the idea of tertiary structure, the unique 3D shape and binding, linking to your biological molecules knowledge, and I'll link the video on proteins up here. And each of these transcriptional factors can bind to different base sequences which they are complementary in shape to. And when these proteins, these transcriptional factors bind to the DNA, it then enables RNA polymerase to bind and therefore transcription starts. So a transcriptional factor, it's a 3D shaped protein. Um, you have part of the protein will bind to the DNA and another part of the protein is often a receptor for another molecule to attach to um, before it can then attach to the DNA. We'll come back to that. So once the transcriptional factor is bound, as I said, that then means RNA polymerase can bind to the DNA, and therefore an mRNA sequence is created, a copy of that particular gene, that can then move into the cytoplasm, attached to a ribosome, and the polypeptide chain is created. So unless the transcriptional factor is bound, the gene is turned off or it's inactive. So the key example that you need to know is a transcriptional factor which is activated by oestrogen. So oestrogen is not the transcriptional factor, it is what activates it. And oestrogen is a steroid hormone and that means it's lipid soluble. So because it's lipid soluble, on the outside of the cell, Oestrogen can be transported through the blood and then it can simply diffuse through cell membranes because it's lipid soluble. So that's how oestrogen will enter the cell. Once it's in the cell, in the cytoplasm, it can bind to the receptor section of a transcriptional factor. And that's because the oestrogen is complementary in shape to part of the receptor. Now, when it binds, what that does is it changes the shape of the DNA binding site. And this again links to your knowledge of proteins and tertiary structure. So when a molecule binds to a protein, it often changes the shape of the protein. And that's what we're seeing here. Once that estrogen is bound, you can see it's bound here, it slightly changes the shape of the protein and it's actually at the DNA binding site we can see that change and that change actually now makes it complementary in shape to the DNA so it's able to bind to it. So this is now an activated transcriptional factor 
and that activated transcriptional factor can move through nuclear pores into the nucleus. It's then able to bind to that DNA and because it's bound to the DNA, RNA polymerase can then attach and therefore mRNA is created. Now RNA polymerase can only attach once the transcriptional factor is attached because again RNA polymerase is a protein, it's got a unique 3D shape and the active site of RNA polymerase is only complementary in shape to the DNA and the transcriptional factor together. So that's why they have to be bound before transcription can occur. So just to go through some of the key words and how they link together as a summary. So this is an example of gene regulation. We are regulating whether the genes are turned on or off. And in this case, it's transcriptional factors which are turning on the gene. A steroid hormone can bind to transcriptional factors which activates them. And estrogen is an example of a steroid hormone which activates the transcriptional factor. And because the estrogen binds to the transcriptional factor, transcription can then occur. So that is it. That's what you need to know about transcriptional factors to regulate DNA. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.